Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got a video for you about the O2 level flag spaces that were built into the Iowa class battleships and then deleted in the 1980s. Right now, we are in the space called CEC, the Combat Engagement Center. Most ships in the US Navy post radar have a space called CIC, the Combat Information Center and Battleship New Jersey does as well. However, in the 1980s, the Navy was looking to install all of the control equipment for modern radars, missiles, phalanxes, electronic countermeasures, etc., cetera, uh, into a big coordination space. They decided rather than using the kind of small CIC several decks below inside the armored citadel, that they were gonna put it up in the superstructure. So they were looking at what spaces uh, were available that they could gut and convert into this, uh, and they found the former flag spaces. These flag spaces were just unarmored birthing compartments and meeting spaces and all that sort of stuff. And the Navy didn't want these ships to be reactivated for millions of dollars in the 1980s, only to be turned into Admiral's yachts. The Navy intended for the more sophisticated modern cruisers to form the flagships of battleship battle groups and for these ships to just be a tool in that arsenal. And by the late 80s, after these ships had, had been around for a couple of years, this was sort of reversed and some other spaces were gutted into makeshift flag spaces later on. Uh, but this, is part of what once was the flag spaces on the Iowa class battleships throughout most of their career. All of the Iowa class battleships were set up to be flagships with Iowa herself set up to be a fleet flagship with a couple of extra accommodation features. I'm fairly certain all of the Iowa class battleships were used as flagships throughout various times in their career. This space uh, during World War II would have been the home of Admiral Raymond Spruance when he commanded Fifth Fleet both in early 1944 and in late 1945, and would have been the home to Admiral William F. Halsey when he commanded Third Fleet in late 1944. In the 1950s, it was again home to a couple of fleet commands. Uh, in the uh, later part of the Korean War, Admiral Jaco Clark commanded Seventh Fleet from on board, and then post-war, Admiral Charles Wellborn commanded Second Fleet from on board. In addition to all these fleet commands, Various squadron and task force and uh, battle group admirals also commanded from this space. During the Vietnam War, uh, the, the modernization of the ship was less complete, and the, uh, this area became known as the Halsey Memorial Suite. And uh, it was used as like a conference hall, meeting space, uh, a place that you could show off, uh, but it, it wasn't really modernized in any way. Well, then the 1980s happen and they come through and they completely gut it. In fact, uh, they even cut away the bulkheads in these spaces and replace them with HY-80 steel, which is basically submarine pressure hull, the, the modern equivalent of armor plating, uh, because this is so exposed up in the superstructure. Where we are now was once the uh, Admiral's conference room. So the, the whole flag staff could gather in here. There would have been a, a big table in roughly this area. There should be a door in this bulkhead, which would connect the Admiral's Chief of Staff cabin with, with this space. Uh, and there should be a hatch in the overhead roughly here with a ladder coming down for uh, access to the O3 level bridge up above. Some of the Iowas retain this ladder for ease of movement New Jersey, which was reactivated first in the 1980s, got the most compact combat engagement center. And, and this space is comically small for, for a modern ship uh, to, to have all this stuff crammed into it. This bulkhead did not exist originally. There's actually about 10 feet beyond this, which uh, this partition was added uh, right around 1989, when the ship got a new flag staff, they wanted to make a separate flag space in CEC. Uh, so they cramped it even further and, and threw that bulkhead in and, and uh, put some computers over there. 
but otherwise that's what this space was. Let's step out through the uh, modern armored door here and see some other spaces. This is the Chief of Staff stateroom. Today we interpret it like Admiral Halsey's stateroom, uh, but really his stateroom is on the opposite side of the ship. This was his Chief of Staff. The Chief of Staff is uh, number two in command. If something happened to the Admiral, the Chief of Staff takes over. Otherwise, he is uh, helping the Admiral run everything, coordinating his schedule, all that sort of stuff. So he's got a stateroom right next to the Admiral and with quick access through what used to be a door. You can see where they blanked it over, uh, but you can go straight through there into the, the conference room and from there straight up the ladder inside to the flag bridge. So Halsey's chief of staff when he was on board this ship was Admiral Mick Carney, who is portrayed by the uh, Dorfman mannequin here. And uh, of course, we've got Halsey sitting next to him. The bed here is Admiral Halsey's actual bed, which uh, Naval History and Heritage Command acquired at some point and then loaned to the museum to put on display here. This space looks very much like it would have throughout the early part of the ship's career. Um, I, I almost guarantee you that it looked like this in World War II uh, and didn't change through the Korean War, and they likely didn't put any effort into changing it for the Vietnam War. Uh, so would have looked just like this. In the 1980s, they turned it into a more conventional guest officer stateroom when all of the rest of this became CEC and the flag spaces disappeared. But this is one of the few spaces that we've retrofitted. And the reason we made that decision is because the overhead deck here, pretty thin, maybe, maybe three eighths of an inch thick, uh, had rotted teak wood on it and it wasted away entirely which uh, caused a ton of water intrusion damage in this space. So, since it was historically significant in its World War II configuration, rather than trying to restore it to its 1980s configuration, the decision was made to go through and it needed a new coat of paint anyway. Why not paint it wardroom green instead of the modern white? Uh, the tiles were uh, all popping up, so why not rip them up and leave the deck bare steel like it would have been in World War II? Uh, the, the doors were damaged. Why not remove them? Uh, the Iroquois battleship didn't have many joiner doors in World War II. As, a, as an expedient, they just hung, hung curtains. And otherwise, the, the various furnishings were still intact with the wood grain paint pattern you see in uh, high-ranking cabins on the ship. And so it was relatively easy to bring the ship up to, uh, or down, to World War II standards in, in this one area. We don't make that decision often because these spaces have significance to the 1980s crew. And there are more 1980s crew than crew from any of our other commissioning periods. That was our longest commissioning period, believe it or not. Uh, and, and so we wouldn't go to a uh, 1980s birthing space and gut it out to turn it into a World War II space. But since this was just a guest cabin and there, there aren't probably very many individuals who were associated with this space, we felt fine ripping it out and retrofitting it. So next we're gonna go across the hall. So in the 1980s, this room became known as subplot, but in uh, World War II, it was actually two rooms. You can see part of the partition bulkhead right here where this part of the passageway was framed off and there's some weld marks from where it joined. So this was just a vestibule to get into the Admiral's space. And this over here used to be the Admiral's pantry. The Admiral had his own uh, cook who would prepare anything for him and uh, it is right nearby. So all of the other flag spaces are around here and uh, from here he's got Really easy access to the admiral's spaces to clean, to bring them food, whatever the case may be. Uh, right now, our radio club uses these spaces for some of the equipment maintenance that happens in CEC. They're the guys who run a lot of the equipment in there. Uh, and that's also what you're going to see when we go into the admiral's uh, stateroom, uh, or what's left of it, rather. But uh, you'll see that in a second. So this space is, in the 1980s, referred to as SSES, Ships, Signals, exploitation space. So this is where the uh, spooks, the intelligence officers would be. And while the ship is doing uh, things like sailing into the Sea of Oshkosh, 
um, where she's then being shadowed by Russian aircraft and Russian ships. They're collecting all of the signals intelligence data they can from both the Russian mainland and from these various ships so that we can analyze it. Uh, so, so there would be translators in here working on that stuff. There'd be all sorts of uh, classified electronics in here. Um, and when the ship was decommissioned in 91, all of that equipment was removed. You don't leave that stuff for the museum. That's still contemporary in use stuff. You'll notice that the door has a combination lock and um, you were not getting in here unless you, you had security clearance and you were supposed to be here. Some of the equipment that remains are these 1980s era teletypes, but most of the equipment is gone. And so this space was taken over by uh, the museum, by our volunteers, to hold all of the electronics equipment that runs all the screens over in CEC. So the, the equipment that you see working in there, it's not actually functioning radars and missile systems. It's just facsimiles uh, from the computers on the towers in here. So in World War II, this was uh, the flag cabin where the Admiral's sitting room was, more or less. And uh, the back part of the room, probably along this bulkhead right here, was the Admiral's stateroom. So they knocked out another wall here to make this one big space. Uh, in actuality, this should be the stateroom. That should be the sitting room. So this is where the Admiral's bed would have been uh, and all of his furnishings and whatnot. Again, not all the Iowa's got the same configuration. New Jersey has CEC and SSES separate, so they're two relatively small spaces. Uh, by the time you get to Wisconsin, which is the last of these vessels commissioned, this whole space from this bulkhead all the way over to the bulkhead in CEC has all the partitions knocked out, and it's one big combat engagement center uh, that starts to approach what a modern ship should have. In the late 1980s, like 88, 89, when the ship was selected to be a flagship again, uh, they did add new flag spaces, one deck below us, right next to the captain's import cabin. A series of spaces which had probably been for guest officers were knocked out and turned into an admiral's suite. And some other spaces around the ship were converted to flag plot. Uh, so the old warrant officer's mess was converted to a flag plot space. It had previously been used as uh, a weightlifting room and a chapel at, at various times. Uh, and, and some other various small cabins were, were converted over to flag spaces. There, I believe that this was an unauthorized ship off. The ship's crew heard that this was happening and they did it themselves. Although Wisconsin has a very similar uh, configuration, which may have been done in a shipyard which might imply that ours was also done in a shipyard. It, it's unclear. When you come out and visit the ship, you will be able to see CEC, the Chief of Staff's office, and the 1980s flag spaces, but you can't see in here. Did your ship have a large CIC, or was it uh, closer in size to our CEC? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of businesses and viewers like yourselves. If you would like to support us, there's a link down in the description. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we put out new content. Thanks for watching.